guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you another Flix and Lit video. And today I'm going to be talking about the film adaptation of White Oleander by Janet Fitch. So White Oleander basically tells the story of a young girl named Astrid who, when she's about 12 years old, her mother kills her ex-boyfriend and goes to prison. And it sort of throws Astrid into the foster care system in California. And she basically comes of age uh, going from foster home to foster home and having these sort of stand-in mothers uh, while also trying to maintain a relationship with her mom while she's in prison and kind of the uh, the way that that relationship is strained by her mother being in prison and by Astrid uh, being in this situation, being bounced around and such because of what her mother did. So basically, I read this book last month. It was a five-star read. I loved it so much. I just loved the writing, first of all. I thought the writing was just very, for being flowery and such, uh, it just drew me right in. I just loved it. Uh, I loved the characters. I loved Astrid and just the way that she sort of navigated this new world of hers. And I actually found a lot of the women that she sort of came across throughout her, her you know, time in the foster care system, I actually found them to be very interesting as well. So what I, that was what I loved about the book was how Astrid in going and living with all these different kind of stand-in mothers, learn different things about womanhood and growing up and things like that and kind of the kind of person that she wants to be and everything. So now, getting into the film, first of all, I loved the casting of the film. Um, Alison Lohman, I believe is how you say her last name, uh, plays Astrid and she was pretty much perfect for the role because um, Astrid had this very, especially at the beginning of, this, of the story, this very soft, sweet, innocent sort of way about her. And as the book progressed, you kind of saw her harden a little bit, and I think that Allison just nailed that. And then of course Michelle Pfeiffer, who is just outstanding, <laughs> she plays Ingrid, Astrid's mother. and. Again, there were some great scenes in the movie from her as well, uh, specifically a scene towards the end of the film where she and Astrid are having a conversation uh, and kind of um, some things come up um, about Astrid's childhood and everything and just the way that that scene went down was was just perfect. It was done very, very well. Some of the other standouts were, I thought that Renee Zellweger played um, one of the foster mothers, Claire. She played her very well. Though her look was different from the film, in the film she, or, I'm sorry, in the book she had, um, was described as having dark hair and was very pale. Uh, Renee Zellweger is obviously um, not a brunette, um, and in the film she's not a brunette anyway. Uh, but she played that character very well. Claire was very, also very soft and sweet, um, but could also be viewed as weak and fragile. And I think that Renee Zellweger also just nailed that character. The other last standout I have to mention is Robin Wright, who plays the first foster mother that Astrid goes to, um, and her name is Star. And she, again, nailed that character. It was so, so perfect. And it's funny because when I was reading the book, I was kind of picturing her to look like how Robin Wright looks in that film. So it was it was kind of weird, but she, again, did a great job. The only things that I noticed that were different were a lot of the time that Astrid spends with each of these people is condensed down in the book. And they, and they actually removed a couple of the foster homes from the story, which I was a little bit sad about because there was one in particular, um, one character in particular in the book named Olivia who I really was hoping to see in the movie uh, because Astrid le actually learned a lot from her, but they took her out, uh, unfortunately, and they kind of opted to spend more time on another, uh, sort of like another stretch of her journey because um, there is a time in the book where she goes and stays at a kind of um, like an orphanage type of place where there's a bunch of foster kids staying together uh, and in the book that part was kind of short but they spent a little more time on that in the movie so it was kind of a trade-off uh, so I missed I missed having that character but I can kind of see why they did it because they wanted to focus more on her time in this um, home and the people that she meets in there they also changed the ending a little bit. 
Uh, I mean, it was kind of a big change, but it didn't really change the outcome of the, of the overall story, and so I thought that it was fine. The only thing that I, the only kind of gripe that I sort of have about this movie was that, uh, first of all, right away in the beginning you find out what Ingrid did to get into prison, how she murdered this man, right? And it kind of changes your perception of her throughout the rest of the book. And in the movie, they don't reveal that right away. And even throughout, it's kind of vague what exactly she did. Uh, and I think it does make you feel differently about her. And then the other thing was the movie is a PG-13 rated movie. And so a lot of the super adult themes that you saw in the book, especially um, when it came to some of Astrid's sexuality and uh, things like that were super toned down or weren't really, they weren't really explored like they were in the book. Uh, so it felt, it felt a lot more PG than the book was. But overall, I thought that this was a pretty good adaptation. It had some really great acting. It had, a, you know, a great cast. Uh, yeah, and I think that the changes that they made to the plot weren't detrimental to the story. I could kind of see why they had to condense things down and cut things down to make it fit into a two-hour movie. So uh, overall, I would say if you have not watched the White Oleander adaptation but have read the book, you should definitely check it out. It's definitely worth watching. Um, I, I enjoyed the film. And if you haven't read the book, though, I would say definitely read the book because the writing is just so good. Uh, you get so much more depth um, in terms of the characters and in terms of Astrid and her her coming of age and her development. Uh, it's just fantastic in the book. So definitely, definitely read the book. But also, yeah, go ahead and check out the film adaptation. All right, guys, so that is all I have for today. Um, those are my thoughts on the film adaptation of White Oleander. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, as always, um, if you have any other suggestions for a Flicks and Lit video, please let me know because I'm always looking for other... Uh, books and movies to compare. I think it's a lot of fun. And of course, if you've seen White Oleander or read the book, let me know down below what you thought of the adaptation if you've seen it or if you want to read or if you want to see the adaptation uh, now that you have read the book. All right, that's all I have. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.